Hi, this is Mr. Moreno again, and this is for Past 7, Earth's Atmosphere, Chapter 2.4. And this chapter is called, Water Falls to Earth's Surface as Precipitation. Now, an accident, on the last one, I talked about precipitation already and this shower thing. So that's why I left this here. But if you want an explanation of this, look at the video for 2.3. I already talked about it towards the, the middle of the video. But, so... This one I wanted to talk about the picture on page 69, the different kinds of rain or different kinds of precipitation. So some are very, very common. Rain, I think, needs no explanation. Rain is just water normally coming down. And you'll see rain on summer days. And if you think about it, that's not that unusual. When I, when I was back in America, I thought rain in the summer was unusual. But that's mainly because it doesn't rain very often in Los Angeles. But rain in the summer is very usual if you think about it because there's a lot of evaporation. And if there's a lot of evaporation, there means that means there's a lot of water in the atmosphere. So if there's a lot of water in the atmosphere, it condenses and it rains. But there are other things that are similar to rain, other types of precipitation. One is drizzle. Drizzle is just very, very small rain. Very, very small amounts of rain. Usually they're very, very small, tiny particles. That is probably because the rain, the cloud is just big enough to form rain, but it's not so big such that it'll cause a big rainstorm. So that is why there's only a little bit of drizzle on those days. Sleet. Well, let's, let's start with the common ones. Snow is another common one. Snow. And snow is very similar to rain or drizzle, but the only difference is that in the atmosphere, it is cold enough where water freezes. And if you remember, water freezes at zero Celsius. That is why we made it zero Celsius. So if it is below zero Celsius that day, more than likely it'll snow instead of rain. There are exceptions, but more than likely it'll snow. And s snow is just rain that has frozen into little flakes. These three are common. The next three are not as common. And I'll start with well, I'm basing how common they are based on my own experience here. So I'm sticking to that. I don't know how common they are around the world. But sleet. What is sleet? Sleet says it's rain that freezes into ice pellets while falling through the cold air. So if there's a little bit of drizzle or very, very small rain, and the air is close to zero Celsius, it'll start freezing maybe right before it hits the ground. And you might have seen this before. I saw this twice last year. That, that can look like just, it looks like hail, but very, very small, tiny balls of ice. It doesn't look like the nice flakes for snow because it's not cold enough to have frozen up here. It's just tiny balls of ice. Sleet. The next not so common one is freezing rain. Maybe I haven't been paying atten attention, but I don't think I've ever seen freezing rain. But freezing rain happens, again, close to zero Celsius. When the temperature is near this, or maybe a little bit colder, up here it is not cold enough to become snow. But for some reason, maybe it was very cold the days before that, but the ground is very cold. So if there is, for example, a flower, and the flower is very cold. I mean, there are not many flowers in the, in the winter, but just bear with me, just as an example. And the raindrop hits it, it's, this raindrop is going to instantly become below zero degrees Celsius. And at zero degrees Celsius, water freezes, so it'll start freezing. That is freezing rain, when it freezes on contact with the ground, or very close to the ground. That's freezing rain. The rain is below zero Celsius, but not up here. That's why it didn't freeze. 
And the very last one, it's the most unusual one. I've seen it a couple times in America, um, never in Korea, but it is called hail. And the reason why it's not very common is because if you look at the picture, hail requires kind of a pattern. It cannot just be a cloud. It's not just a cloud where hail comes down because you can think of hail like a snowball. If you've ever seen a snowball, rolling a snowball, the snowball becomes bigger, right? It's the same idea. It's kind of like small snowflake, but imagine there's a lot of wind, and this wind is pushing the snowflake up, but now it's touching more snowflakes, so it becomes bigger. And the wind, the wind is very powerful that day, so it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Of course, this picture is a little bit exaggerated until there are these big balls called hail. Now, hail can be very dangerous. And if you see some videos, you might even see hail breaking windows because they're big balls of ice. Imagine just like a brick of ice throwing it over a building. It's coming with a very, very fast velocity, and it's very heavy. So, of course, this very, very big ball could not have formed just in a cloud it requires some special wind patterns to move it around and give it time to start forming bigger and start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And if there's a lot of wind that's doing this, this can be repeated to thousands, millions of balls of hail. Now, as you can imagine, hail does not happen very often. And the reason is, this kind of pattern is a little bit unusual. It's not something that happens every day. So for the most part, you probably never see hell. You'll probably see even sleet or freezing rain before you see hell. But, well, maybe not freezing rain. I've never seen it. But anyways, it requires a special pattern. And if you look at the picture on page 69, it says that it forms, or rather on page 68, it says that it, it forms an cumulonimbus cloud. And the reason for that is because if you look at that particular cloud, that cloud is very, very tall, very big. Also, if you look at how the size of it on page 61, that cloud has a big range. So there's a lot of water, a lot of cl cloud area for, that, for this to get bigger and bigger. Um, that's all. Goodbye.